Finally the first non-Meridian MQA DAC hits the market and I am amongst the first to listen to it. I've worked for and owned both professional audio and consumer audio magazines and therefore was aware of my tech quite early. Reviews I have published on professional DA converters favoured MyTech as one of the better brands. Over the last years I have heard enthusiastic reports on the MyTech Stereo 192 DSD DAC. When the Dutch distributor AudioSense sent me a press release on the Brooklyn, I immediately reacted by re requesting a review sample. The Brooklyn is a DA converter preamp and headphone amplifier that does PCM up to 32 bit 384 kHz, DSD up to DSD 256 and MQA decoding. It also has an analog input that can be switched between line level and phono level for both MC and MM cartridges. It not only accepts USB audio profile tool, Toslink, SPDIF and AS EBU but also DSD SDIF signals. The latter is a professional format that is predominantly used in Japan and in studios recording DSD. For Windows, fast drivers including AC and Wasabi are provided. Mac OS and Linux support USB audio profile too right out of the box and thus need no driver. The front looks rather baroque on photos but the silver version I was lent for review looks fine in real life. Central on the front is a colourful OLED display that in its standard mode holds modulation meters for both peak and average with on the right of it a peak hold in numbers for all four meters. Below that four menu options that are accessible through four buttons while the digital encoder knob on the right lets you change the setting by turning and confirm the setting by pressing. Alternatively, this can be done using the Apple remote that comes with the unit or you can use a Philips RC5 remote. Using RC5 also seems to be limited to four arrow keys, the select key and the return key. This limits the remote for day by day use since the text on the display is too small to be read at a distance. I would have preferred a remote protocol that would have had discrete codes for input selection mute and volume. But let's have a look at the menu options. The utmost left option lets you select the input. Simply press the left of the four push buttons and turn and press the rotary controller. Or use the remote as I did here. The input options are analog, optical, SPDIF2 and SPDIF1, AES, EBU or USB. As said, the analog input can be set to line level, moving magnet pickup or moving coil pickup, while the SPDIF 1 and 2 can be altered to DSD SDIF. To set the volume, you can always turn the rotary control as long as it isn't engaged in a menu option. But there is a volume me menu as well. Another option lets you set a sync clock to internal, where a Fanto precision clock controls the converter or to external where another clock takes care of the pace of the converter. This usually will only be the case in multi-channel use where four or more converters run in parallel, all synchronized on the clock of the first. The output can be set to line out only, headphones only, both or automatic where plugging in a headphones will route the output to the headphones only. One option to the right lets you switch SPDIF inputs 1 and 2 to function as DSD SDIF inputs. It is also possible to switch off the MQA decoder which is handy for comparison. The volume control can be set to analog, digital or bypass. In bypass only the line level outputs are in full bypass mode where the headphones still are controlled by the analog fader. And yet we are not even halfway through the menu options. Like the option to change the color of the light behind the logo which is handy for identification in a multi-channel setup. There also is a screen saver that only shows the bit depth, sampling rate, volume setting and MQA status. 
the two headphone outputs on the front can be combined to a symmetrical feed for high-end headphones. On the rear we find a stereo balance line outputs on XLR, stereo single ended line outputs on RCA, stereo single ended analog inputs and AES EBU input on XLR, two SPDIF inputs on RCA that double as DSD SDIF inputs, a USB B socket, a TOSLINK input that also accepts semi professional ADAT format, a word clock in and out on B and C a ground terminal for use with turntables, an IEC power input and a 12 volt DC power input for if you want to use a battery or high end power supply instead of the internal high quality switching power supply. The supplied photo indicates 7 to 14 volts but my review sample had 12 volts printed here. All digital inputs accept signals up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz and DSD 64 over DOP. Only the USB input accepts signals up to 32 bit 384 kHz and DSD 256. The SPDIF, TOSLINK and AES EBU inputs can also be used to transmit digital audio into the computer over the USB connection. As always you can skip the tech by jumping to the timecode above. The first thing when you open it is a switching power supply in a perforated cage. That outputs 12 volts and can be overridden by a 12 volt DC external power supply. But then it becomes very foggy since the Brooklyn has several microprocessors and controllers and a FPGA on board and without clarification by MyTech you could only find out what they do by reverse engineering. Something I won't and can't do. And it's unlikely MyTech will let us in on their secrets given the filed off model numbers on a number of chips in the analog outputs. Also note the VMAC capacitors and the position resistors here. Placing jumpers on four connectors, three of them are visible here, you can reduce the output voltage from an extremely high 4.88 volts with 6 dB to a more normal 2.44 volts. These jumpers come with the unit and are a must as far as I am concerned for using a normal stereo set. If you look to the left you see a well known ESS Sabre ES9018K2M DA converter chip. Another thing I noted, the digital inputs seem to be galvanically decoupled by a pulse transformer. The measurements show a very clean design that uses minimum phase filters and thus have no pre-echo at the expense of a bit more post-echo. But that is considered to be masked by the original signal. The Brooklyn is a stunning good converter. It's less than two years ago that I reviewed the Court Hugo to find it in a leak on its own given the price. The Brooklyn outperforms it in many though not all fields. Using normal PCM and DSD material the impulse response of the Yugo is still unbeaten, but the stereo image of the Brooklyn is slightly more open and somewhat deeper. The lows are clearly more open and go deeper with more tonality. It's a matter of preference whether you like one over the other. I am still not sure after almost four weeks daily listening, but I tend to lean towards the Brooklyn. Things changed clearly after I received a comprehensive number of MQA encoded tracks. It felt if all good qualities of the Yugo were added to the Brooklyn and even more. It is still too early to say to what extent this is purely due to MQA. I will report on MQA listening experiences in more detail soon. But the Brooklyn with good MQA tracks sounds extremely impressive. MQA, the company that is, will have lent me tracks that perform extremely well of course, and rightly so, but this means that I have heard what the potential is and that's enormous. There's much to like about the Brooklyn. To begin with the sound. Using regular music material including 24 bit 192 kHz and DSD 64 it's already impressive. 
Add to that the MQA decoding that I expect to become rather popular for quality streaming and the extreme versatility of all in and outputs and I am quite willing to forgive the limited remote controllability. Admittedly, most people won't use the DSD SDIF inputs or the phono inputs. Having both analog and digital volume control is a bit of overkill and the level meters might not be to everybody's taste. But you don't need to use those inputs nor the volume control and the meters disappear when you select the screensaver mode. What stays is the fantastic sound quality you get for only two grand. There are people that think that stereo equipment hasn't improved over the last 10 or 20 years. Just like the stereo turntable really matured 25 years after introduction, digital audio is maturing quickly over the last decade. The decade started 25 years after the introduction of the CD. A coincidence? I don't think so. So if you want to stay informed, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You'll find more info information below this video on YouTube and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.